to talk about your book page, your forwards and paperbacks, because I think that's a really good thing that you do for actually encouraging young athletes to read. Because I know myself, I was quite bad when I was younger for not picking up a book. I was quite bad for going to training and then just relaxing each other in front of the telly before bed and school the next day and things like that. So tell us a bit about forwards and paperbacks. How did you come about that? Yeah, so I think um, forwards and paperbacks came about. I, obviously, I've always been an avid reader. Um, I definitely became more of an avid reader through lockdown and through my injury, um, uh, through my uh, my knee injury. So I, you know, I spent a lot of time out of the game, and I uh, just wanted something to do. I wanted to not only develop myself physically, but also mentally, and in, in not just you know people say they want to be you know more uh, resilient, but I wanted to be more knowledgeable. I wanted to be more mindful. I wanted to you know, broaden my horizon, so to speak, you know, the cliche term. So, um, you know, I was having a conversation with with my old man and I said, you know, I don't just want to read. I want to kind of, you know, make it a hobby and then spread the word about books that I read. And a lot of the books that I read are relatable to other athletes, to young people. And I think the books that I read are books that other young people should read. And he said, mm -hmm. well, why don't you do something on social media, you know, go on Instagram and make a pay. You've seen other one, other people do it. So I thought, yeah, why not? So I started, uh, started forwards and paperbacks and I, you know, I kind of, I thought I put a bit of effort in it. So I got, you know, someone to do the little logo and stuff. And ever since then, I've just been reading and I've really been enjoying my reading. And then, you know, doing the reviews has been, you know, really easy and, you know, really enjoyable. And then I've had some really good feedback from it. I've had people say, I'm going to read that now. I've had you know, uh, suggestions and recommendations on what to read next. And uh, I really enjoyed it. I think at the moment, if you looked at my page now, it's pretty, uh, it has, I haven't uploaded a, a book in a while. Um, mm -hmm. And that's because I'm starting law school in September. So I've been pretty busy with that. Well, uh, plenty of books there anyway. So. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if the book people that are going to want to see the reviews of those books, but um but yes, yeah, so I'm starting law school in September online and part time. So I've been really busy with that, making sure that's all sorted. So I haven't actually had a space to read, which is a pretty bad excuse coming from me, who kind of encourages people to find any any time to read. But I will get back on it and I will start uh, reviewing some more books. I've actually got, you can see in the background, mm -hmm. uh, a, a stack of books that I haven't read yet uh, that I've kind of search for and been recommended and I every time I get a, re a book recommended which I really encourage through DMs via the page I put them on the list and I buy them and I read them that's usually what yeah. I do and then yeah and then people comment and their reviews it's brilliant it's really good I really enjoyed it so yeah yeah I enjoyed it because me and you we messaged a few times I think we were discussing the book uh Bounce I can never remember the author but we were discussing it and it's Matthew, all about Matthew Fahid, his name is I think it is it? Do you? I never remember the author, but I've, I remember reading it, and I remember my brother reading it and telling me about it because I mentioned it to you. Yeah. And I think like there's so, like you said, there's so many books that you don't come from an athletic background, which are relatable. A hundred percent, hundred percent, and uh, uh, obviously, Bounce is a brilliant book. You know the ten thousand hour rule that he talks about in that book, <laughs> um, which you know, take that with a pinch of salt. I would, I would say to people, I don't want, I don't want young people around the place starting their clock for 10,000 hours and counting it down and put, passing the ball against the wall for 10,000 hours. So I think their parents would probably kill them. But um, <laughs> there's definitely other ways of doing it. There's definitely books out there that just aren't sport related at all that you can mm. really relate to. Um, if you look at my page, I don't want to keep plugging it, but um, there's books that just you really wouldn't, you really wouldn't understand. I think there's lessons in books like I, I read for, I, I read Death of a Salesman, which is a play. Mm. Um, and that was just brilliant. I really enjoyed it. And it also um, had a, a deeper meaning in it, a deeper story. I, want, I don't want to give it away, but uh, things to learn from, things to learn from. And, yeah. and these will be learning, you know, people, young lads, young girls that are sportsmen or not sportsmen or, uh, or not athletes, thinking, what does he mean? There's deeper lessons to learn moving forward. Well, read it and you'll find out. Yeah. So there we go. Up. What a plug that is. There you the, go, yeah. the, the author of Death of a Salesman or the writer of Death of a Salesman now owes you a cheeky bit of cut as well when he gets oh, yeah, exactly, yeah, yeah. When all, all eight of my listeners go, I'll give that book a go. <laughs> <laughs> I promise I have more than that. You're not yeah, wasting I definitely time. Have to say, probably more than that. <laughs> oh, it's not, we're not quite really, famous yeah. yet. We're going, but we're getting there. Yeah. Mate, what three books would you recommend to somebody? Not for, not even particularly a young athlete, but say like a young person, like you said, so Death of a Salesman, maybe, or... Uh, yes, I'd say obviously Death of a Salesman. Um, uh, wow, <laughs> um, I've had a fair few. Um, 
What was the one we discussed? It was the one with the it was the Michael Jordan's old coach, Seven Rings. Yeah, so I read um Phil Jackson's Eleven Rings, which was mm-hmm. brilliant. Yeah, definitely recommend that. Um Seven Rings, that's from Lord of the Rings. Sorry. Yeah, I'm, reading, yeah. I'm reading the Lord of the Rings book at the moment, so that's where I've got oh, seven yeah, rings. So, yeah, so Eleven Rings, it's brilliant book. Um, and that's kind of gives you an idea of how he managed certain people's egos. Obviously, um having people like Michael Jordan and Kobe Bryant. Um, these people obviously are the best at what they do, but yeah. with, with that comes some sort of ego where they want to do it their way. And he's got to allow them to express themselves, but also, you know, fill in a team and be leaders. And especially a lot of these players, especially people like Kobe at the time, obviously, you know, God rest his soul, he, he didn't know how to be a, be a leader. And mm-hmm. basically, Phil allowed him to to be to become that person people obviously looked up to it but he looked up to him but he didn't see it mm-hmm. and allowing Co- the way he worked was he allowed pe- that allowed Kobe to see that and then he then realized how valuable he was and that's his, I mean I'm not giving enough away here so definitely keep re- definitely read it um that's an important book to read and I think another book I would um trying to look at my books here <laughs> I didn't bring, I've got so many that I've read that I actually didn't bring them up to Cornwall because I've read so many, it'd be too many to bring. Well, yeah. Uh, uh, another book I would suggest reading um, would be Atomic Habit, Habits. Yeah. Um, by James Clear. Now everyone raves about it, but it's brilliant. I don't want to give any away because you can't. You can't. Uh, <laughs> I'm secretly writing these down because I've not read that one. So. Uh, yeah. So that's one. I can't really give anything away there. You just have to read it. It's brilliant. <laughs> Um, that's really it. I think um, those are my recommendations. I think there's such a very death of itself is completely the other side of Atomic Habits, but mm-hmm. it just has meaning in it. And, you know, you've got authors like Albert Camus, who does kind of, is completely out there, completely different. Yeah. Um, but I suggest reading anything that he's written. He's brilliant, sensational. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, just, I mean, just, I mean, if I could give, if I could give my, my, like, my advice would be just read anything and everything. Just read anything and everything. Broaden your horizons. Gain knowledge on anything. And if you read something, then there's a film about it or there's a documentary about it. Add them together. Definitely read the book first before you watch the movie because it will ruin the book. But um, just just immerse yourself in it. No, I couldn't agree more. I've been trying to up my reading just for... I think it really benefits not just like the vocabulary, but the way... Like you were saying, it almost benefits the way you look on life as well. I think when you get so many different perspectives, a hundred percent, a hundred percent, and it allows you to yeah. to um, to just have a little bit more empathy uh, to people's situations. I, def- I I certainly read books that uh, are based around people's personal struggles. Um, mm-hmm. I read uh, a book called The Wind Rush Betrayal, which is obviously yeah. a famous part of history that most people uh, know about. And uh, that was a pretty tough read in terms of people's personal struggles, but it, it allowed me to understand not only the history, but what these people went through. Um, and and that kind of made me not only more educated, but more empathetic to their situations. And now I kind of understand that when I see kind of in the House of Commons and still talking about it, I totally understand why they're still talking about it and why justice needs to be uh, mm-hmm. served. I tell you, what, have you ever read? Um, do you remember there's like it's, it used to be? It was like Secret Life of a Junior Doctor, and it was um, this is going to hurt, and it was him telling all his stories from. Yes, Adam McKay is his name. Yeah, Adam McKay. Have you read yeah. his um, Thank You to the NHS one? Not yet. No. It's it's really good. So what he does is he gets a bunch of so what because obviously his book went like famous like New York Times bestseller, yeah. bestseller in England as well because of the stories he had. So yeah. what he did as a thank you to the NHS when COVID started, he got all his celebrity friends. Yeah. So the way he so the way he described it was he sent out wedding invitations to everybody he knew, his publisher knew, expecting to get like a third of them back of like stories they have from the NHS. And he wow. said he's like he got he's got so much he might have to make a second book of it because he got that many replies. He he's actually on my list to read actually, and uh, yeah, because another thing is like I've got obviously close family that work in the NHS and stuff, and and family and friends, so. You hear some of their stories and you just have to read about it. So yeah, he's definitely on the list to read. And another they are, book, they're so good. They're so good. Yeah, I need to. And an- another book I'll, I definitely would plug because it's it's definitely my favorite. I can't believe I forgot it. Is a uh, is a book called Natives by Akala. Um, yes, I, we discussed him last time. Yeah, Akala, yeah. he's brilliant. 
he's absolutely sensational. And the, the book, I think, for any young person who wants to understand more about the play, the, you know, the world they live in at the moment and the country they live in, in terms of England and the British Empire and racism throughout the uh, throughout the decades, definitely a Carla's book. He's just sensational, and he also he also not only gives you you know educational background, but but you know. Uh, combines it with his own experiences it's just a sensational book so i think any one of a or you know growing up should definitely read that mm-hmm. no i agree Do you, uh, did you ever see it was a i think it was one of those you know those facebook videos that creep up out of nowhere and they it was him on a sort of talk show and he was describing the middle east and how it's responsible for like maths and language and things yeah. like that yeah yeah, it's yeah, never, yeah never discussed when people discuss the middle east in britain exactly yeah no I, yeah I've, I've seen that video as well and <laughs> you know he comes up on he comes up on uh, videos of him, like kind of uh, going against, you know, Tommy Robinson of the EDL and all yeah, of that. Yeah. He's obviously so articulate, and he's—I mean, he's a genius. I mean, he is a mm-hmm. genius. And uh, there's another, there's another um, kind of interview you can watch where he gets interviewed by James O'Brien from LBC, mm-hmm. um, which is again, it's an incredible interview. It's very—I think it's like an hour and a half, something like that. And yeah. James O'Brien is a very, very smart man. And Akala, you know, James O'Brien's having to stop him and slow him down because he's so, you know, he's so incredibly smart that James O'Brien's having to take time to kind of process everything that he's saying. And it's, it's a brilliant interview. So I'd encourage people to watch that as well. No, I, I find you, there's like a separate, there's like a separate plane of people that can talk so eloquently. It is almost like a science. 100%. I, I find them, um, have you ever listened to the comedian Tim Minchin? Yeah, the Australian. Is he Australian? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, he's Australian, yeah. He, yeah. if you, so he's famous for his songs and his songs are hilarious. Yeah. But you could, I could go and listen to him talk and like not, yeah. not even try to be funny. Just the way he has an outlook on life is unbelievable yeah. and just. And, and probably these people are very well read as well. So they've read yeah. a lot. And exactly. I read because of their, the amount they've read, they, you know, their vocabulary has expanded. They've become more eloquent. Um, and I know for a fact that Akala has read a lot. That's what I hear. <laughs> you know, so, yeah. Oh, oh! Forgot to mention. Quickly back on. So we're talking about Phil Jackson. Did you yeah. watch on? Did you ever watch on Netflix? A Coach's Rule for Life. I never watched that. Obviously, I watched. Obviously, I, everyone's watched. Um, the Last Dance, or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah the Last Dance. Yeah. Ah, uh, brilliant stuff. And I've not seen that. No, mate. It's really so. The first episode is another basketball coach it's called Doc Rivers. He was the coach of. Um, he was the coach of the Boston Celtics when they had their big team. They had their like superstar team. Yeah, and he talks all about and this this I don't know if you maybe heard it is out like it's called um, Ubuntu, and it's yeah. it, he took it from Africa during like the genocide and the problems Africa was having and yeah 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 I think like late nineties early noughties my history is not I'm really sorry if that's wrong I've yeah, <laughs> tried but but um, so he talks all about that and he talks about how because he had effectively the best players in the world all in one team yeah he's like well I'm I'm not here to coach them how to play basketball they know how to play basketball. <laughs> Yeah, I'm here to yeah. turn them into the team, and then he taught them this philosophy, which is like Ubuntu, and it's like, I it, it basically translates into, I say basically translates. I'll probably paraphrase it and butcher it, but it's like, I am what I am because of you. So it's like, I'm only as good as my competitor. I'm only as good as my friends. Like yeah. my friends make me what I am. So it's like yeah. he, how he taught them all to believe in each other, and it was like it was a very interesting to see how he took such a very wide, expansive topic from such a sad situation. We managed to channel it into such a specific thing. It's, I'm really probably not doing it justice, so you really should go and watch it. It's, it's only like 40 minutes long as an episode, but it's, like, it's a good thing to watch before you go to sleep. No, 100%. I, that, it's on the list. It's on the list. Yeah. I, I'm, I'm very, that's, that's right on my street. So, yeah, definitely. It's, it's really good. And then, like, I remember we were saying, talking the other day, I really like basketball, so that's what drew me in. But that's the part that stuck. It, like, like we're saying, that's the part that stuck with me. Like, the basketball stuff was kind of just... Oh, yeah, okay. exactly. they, they they won some championships. Cool. That's the part that stuck with me. No, exactly. Hundred percent. No, cool. Mm-hmm.